The U.S. relationship with Saudi Arabia. Why is it so powerful and what is it built on? Now, of course, everybody understands it's built on oil. But why oil and why is it so important? In order to understand the U.S. relationship with Saudi Arabia, we have to understand World War II. In many ways, the Allies were able to defeat Nazi Germany because it denied Hitler oil. In 1941, in what was called the Hinge of Fate by Winston Churchill, the future of the Western world really hung in the balance. Hitler was driving for oil, which he needed to run both his panzer tank units and his air force. The two major battles that mark the hinge of fate, one is Stalingrad up in Russia. Hitler was not going for Moscow the way Napoleon had. He was driving towards the Caspian Sea and oil, Russian oil. Rommel's Desert Rats was driving towards oil across North Africa, towards Egypt, the Suez Canal, and wanted to cut Britain off from its oil supplies, which were in Iran, and came through the Suez Canal. So the hinge of fate were these two battles, Stalingrad and El Alamein in northern Egypt. The ability of the Allies to stop Hitler in those two places in 1941 was the deciding point of the war. After that, Hitler's panzer units began to stall and he didn't have oil. This is what won World War II for the West. And the lesson was learned by the United States. That if it wanted to be a world power, and if it wanted to win in a World War III, which many people thought was going to break out within years, they had to dominate oil. The Persian Gulf was the center of oil. Of course, the United States was a major oil producing country, the biggest oil producing country in the world at this time. But more and more oil was being discovered in the Middle East. Iran had become the main source of oil for the British Empire. In 1909, 10, 11, the British decided to convert their coal navy to oil. And that placed Iran at the center of their interests. The Anglo-Iranian Oil Company, later to become BP, British Petroleum, was very important to Britain. Saudi Arabia also thought it could find oil. And in 1930s, American explorers stumbled across oil. They were looking for water, but they found oil. After that, Aramco, the Arabian American Oil Company, became a fixture of Saudi-US relations. My father and my family moved to Saudi Arabia in 1958 in order to found the first bank, any American bank, in Saudi Arabia. The country after that began to boom. Oil didn't, wasn't exported from Saudi Arabia until after World War II. In 1946, just to give you an idea of how poor Saudi Arabia was at the time, the national budget of Saudi Arabia in 1946 was four million pounds sterling. And most of that came from gifts from Britain. Of course, America would eclipse Britain as a benefactor of Saudi Arabia. But ever since that time, the United States has seen the Persian Gulf as key to its position as a superpower. Its hold on oil, most of which is buried under the Persian Gulf. So its control over the Persian Gulf, hegemony as political scientists like to call it, is crucially important. If one thinks today of China, for example, a growing power that could challenge the United States for leadership, China is completely dependent on foreign energy. Most of that comes from the Persian Gulf region, Iran and Saudi Arabia. So by controlling the Persian Gulf and the exit to all that oil outflow, the United States really has a chokehold on the Chinese economy. Were China to attack Taiwan or make aggressive moves in the South China Sea, 
the United States would have considerable leverage over China through its control of oil. So those are factors that weigh on the U.S. today. Many Americans say, let's get out of the Middle East. We don't need Middle Eastern oil. Fracking, the development of more and more oil fields in the United States is leading towards a position of independence for the United States from Saudi and Middle Eastern oil. It is possible that the United States could give up the Persian Gulf, but then who would move in? It would be China and the Chinese military power or Russian military power to protect Saudi Arabia, to officiate between Iran and the Gulf. These are some of the reasons why the United States finds it so difficult to separate itself from the Middle East, why the United States has become so involved in Middle Eastern wars. At first, Iran was the center of U.S. power in the Persian Gulf. That was under the Shah of Iran, who was overthrown in 1979. After 1979, President Carter established Central Command in Tampa, Florida, which was organized in order to protect the Persian Gulf once Iran had moved away from the U.S. Special forces were established, rapid deployment forces that could move into the region rapidly. This security architecture that has been built up in the Persian Gulf undergirds the importance of the region for U.S. interests and U.S. authority in the international economy. So long as oil remains the principal fuel powering modern economies, the relationship between Saudi Arabia, the Gulf region, and the United States is likely to remain one of close allies where the two are intimately involved in each other's affairs.